So now in this video we're going to combine a couple circuit fragments that we've been looking at recently. So we've looked at the Zener diode recently. You use it reverse biased. It's a special diode that you can conduct reverse bias. So you put the cathode and it kind of looks like a Z there on the schematic symbol. Whereas the rectifier diode just has a straight bar right there. But in uh, any case when you apply a voltage across that with a resistance to limit the current but uh, you need some current to flow it will build up that Zener voltage as long as the supply voltage is high enough. So in this case 7 volts will be high enough and uh, it will pass current as needed to hold 5.6 volts across the uh, cathode there and the anode. So we're going to take a trim pot here, a potentiometer, a small one that fits on breadboards really easily and you put that voltage across the two ends of the fixed element there you have a voltage divider and uh, so the uh, trim pot sets a fraction of that voltage in this case 5.6 volts if we put it directly to the power supply then we would have the power supply voltage which is going to change so when the supply voltage changes if we leave the wiper in the same spot that will also change the output voltage so we're going to do something where we don't have that problem where we put a reference voltage with the Zener diode across it and then even as the supply voltage changes We'll still have 5.6 volts across the the uh, trim pot there. That means that if we turn the wiper all the way to uh, ground, so that the arrow is pointing to the ground, which is moving the resistive element, the uh, wiper I should say, across the resistive element all the way to the end to ground, then we'll have zero volts. If we turn it all the way to the positive supply, we'll have 5.6 volts in this case. It won't be exactly 5.6 volts, but it'll be close. Zener diodes are not 100% accurate, but uh, they're pretty close especially these 5.6 ones. And if you set it halfway, you'll have about 2.8 volts. The main thing to be aware of though, is that these are just signal voltages. They're not for powering stuff. So you'll usually send it to an amplifier or something. In this case, we're sending it to an oscilloscope, which just looks at the voltage and displays its value on the screen. It doesn't need any power from the circuit. So there you can see the uh, Zener down, and uh, it's a 5.6 volt Zener down. But uh, we'll leave here so you can see the schematic and the circuit at the same time. One kilo ohm resistor coming from the positive supply. And then we have the trim pot. This trim pot has the resistive element at top and bottom. And then the middle pin is the wiper, which we're just going to hook the oscilloscope up to. And here is my pocket oscilloscope. So I have it set one volt. That's one volt per square right there going up. One volt per division. And then the line is moving across. Uh, one square per second. Our voltage is in relationship to ground. That's why when we turn the wiper all the way to ground, it says zero volts because it'll be a connection at the same point. First, uh, let's look at the supply voltage really quick. And there you can see it's going up seven squares, as we mentioned before, seven volts. That's what the power supply is set to right now. That's our starting voltage. We're gonna raise that in a little bit. So uh, hopefully you can see that. That's as low as I can uh, move the power supply, but uh, it's set to uh, seven volts at the moment. Now we uh, will take a look at the voltage where the uh, Zener diode, I'm actually up one spot, the Zener diode and the resistor connect. There you can see we got about 5.6 volts right there where the Zener diode is up five and a little more than half of a square. So I think it's actually closer to 5.7. But uh, there we go. The trim pot set about, about halfway and we have about three volts. So of course as I turn the trim pot, that'll go up, if we go up, to the full, about 5.6 volts approximately, and then down to about zero. So now let's set it to uh, two volts, and I think I bumped something loose right there, but uh, there we go, we have about uh, two volts, and you'll see the uh, supply voltage now, I'll zoom back so you can see it a little bit better. We got uh, seven volts, and if I increase this, I can go up to about 15 because the, the uh, current limiting resistor, now you can see we got 15 volts and still 2 volts. It held steady right there. So whatever we change it to within that 5.6 volts, it's going to hold steady. Might change just a little bit, might go up just a tiny bit with higher current, but for the most part it holds steady. It's wavering because uh, something got knocked a little loose right there. But in any case, we can go up to 15 volts because this is a one kilo ohm resistor. The 
Zener diode here is a 5.6 volt Zener diode. So it's taken away about 6 volts from that resistor. Plus there's that 10,000 ohms of resistance there. And uh, so we have uh, probably a little less than 10 volts across that resistor right now, 1 kilo ohm. So it should not overheat in this case. But uh, always make sure you don't have uh, too much voltage across the resistor and too much current for its power rating. You should already know how to do that. But in any case, that's it for this video. We got it set to four, and it's holding that at 15 volts. And if we go down to uh, seven volts, it's still holding four, as you can see right there. Now we went to six, it dipped down a little bit. The voltage got a little too low to hold it steady. Of course, it's gonna go down if you get below 5.6. But in uh, any case, hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. If you can donate, please do. I have links down below. But just watching videos helps a ton. I appreciate that. I'll see you in the next video.